I'm Jack and I study Theatre Studies, um, English Literature and History at Ridley St. Thomas. I'm Martha and I study Sociology, Psychology and English Language. I guess the reason I wanted to get involved in this, because, well, it says it in the title really, my story, I really, I'm very interested in other people's stories, so it was lovely to go down and, and meet Mason and just, just hear what he had to say really, especially for me, because I'm from a sort of a semi-rural community myself, so there was a lot of overlap, and I was impressed by, despite sort of the age gap, all the things that were, we could relate to each other. Um, being interested in stuff like um, psychology and sociology, I'm very interested in people and you know the different types of lives, how people, different people experience life differently to what I know myself. I thought it was very interesting talking to somebody of a different, a very different age and a very different generation to myself and finding out about how his life was, the things that he experienced and just basically getting a different perspective on life. Bournemouth. Oh, Bournemouth. Oh, Bournemouth. <laughs> I was born there. Yeah, Bournemouth. You spend your childhood there. Yes. So. You spend your childhood. Yes. Quite a happy one, I suppose. I know, yes. Yeah. No problems. No. What What kind of area did you live in? What was it like? I was you... born on a farm. So I was brought up on a farm, yeah. but uh, I had to stay there for so long during the war because it was a reserved occupation. Yeah. But when it became free, they could move where you wanted. I worked for WJ Fire Limited, they were running on feed confounders and dealers, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. There were quite a number of branches around Lancaster yeah. area. But they were all gone now. Mm. I, think, uh, I don't know what's happened to the place they were part of the office went to YMCA. Oh, right. yeah. but our old farmhouse was dated 1722, so it was quite old. And a house adjoining, uh, I think in the old days, my dad's auntie used to live there, so it was okay. What's happened to it now, I don't know. My mm. nephews have got. Those places. So, I think uh, I remember that one of the old ancestors of some of the. I don't think you could call the temperance to tell, but I don't ever remember it being as such. Mm -hmm. They might have taken people in during the summer just for light refreshments, I don't know, because mm -hmm. you know, didn't live anywhere near. But I do know they had petrol pumped there, little shop and post office. I think from what I remember there, when the post office was owned, if you lived within a certain distance you had your own mail to collect. Huh. After right. that they right. took it out. But when they first started you had cycles with a, with a frame on for to carry the mail. Oh, so, the, the postman. Yeah. <laughs> so it was quite a toy around some of the countryside. Pushing this back mm -hmm. up some of the quite steep hills, so mm -hmm. all weathers. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just below the chapel, there was an old smithy. Right. Uh, I remember him because if you wanted a horse showing, you had to go down and ask him mm -hmm. when he could do it. Then you go back home, yeah. get your horse, wait while he did it, and go back again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was, well, yes, I mean, we try and move, you know, particularly in harvest and hay time, but if we were hay time and the chap next door was struggling, well, one of us would go and help him out. Mm. Um, in harvest, well, you all had to join when it was war time. Yeah. On thrashing days, you all had to share. You know, we, we would send someone to another farm and then return the sent men to us. Yeah. Yeah. And in those days we would probably get extra coupons to feed them. We get the was it the British restaurant you could get that? Alright. So 
and then you had the steam tractors, mm -hmm. steam engines, where I live, it's quite an open spot to get to, so it's quite a problem getting down this quite steep hill, mm -hmm. negotiating it and getting the other, the thrasher, it all lined up. Yeah. last time that you started off at Quorma School and then yes. you moved to Dallas. Was Dallas there Quorma. a reason for that or huh? was, it, was there a particular reason for moving from Quorma to well, Dallas? It was only being put in an infant school. Got to Dallas Road to the back of them, went to the French school after that. And we uh, went to the technical oh, college on a secretarial course. Well, during the war you were Supposed to put plough so much land, so it's so much land to turn over and plough up. Uh, in those days as well, uh, you know, tractors were just coming in, so that made life a lot easier. Mm. Not that the house was any good at ploughing. My cousin was a quite I tried it once, but didn't work fully for a <laughs> No, it's quite a skilled job actually, yeah. to keep a straight furrow. Mm -hmm. There was a chap, a farmer just across uh, from us, and you could see him flowering with horses, and they were absolutely dead straight, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had one or two horses in those days, because, you know, no people had, didn't have tractors. Mm -hmm. We never got one of our own because we used to share with my uncle the next farm. So that made life a bit easier when you were taking root crops off like mangles, turnips. It made life a lot easier. This is for the horses anyway. <laughs> was it just vegetables that you grew on? Was it just vegetables that you grew on the farm or did you have animals at all? Or? Well, we had it was a mix of so much cattle. So many sheep, but my dad was very keen on poultry. So we used to keep quite a number of hens. And we also used to hatch a lot of chickens. They were grown up so big and we used to sell them to so they took them off our hands. They'd probably finish up in the tails or boarding out and didn't walk them. Never know. They just put them away and that was it. Well, only in your left school. But before that, no. Well, I might have done odd jobs, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, it all down milking, so we wanted enough milkers to have it with well having a milking machine. Mm -hmm. So we had the old three leg stool and book, yeah. a tail and book it around. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't always stand still, you were alright, but occasionally you get ticked out. I remember going to my brother-in-law and got ticked out and a bit soaked in milk, but anyway, he had to recover and he just got on with it. Of course, yes. <laughs> but where for winter, he was always clogged. And clog iron, so made a bit of a clack of it, they were warm and dry. Uh, a meeting house, far as I know it's still there, and it mm. used to have a little rosy uh, headstone, that's the only thing you could tell by it. Mm -hmm. I think you remember somebody taking us and I couldn't understand why they all 
were so quiet because we see why the spirit moved I think that it was the idea. I can't remember anything about it. Mm -hmm. So they had a Methodist chaplain. My uncle used to play the organ sometimes and sometimes my sister, my cousin, and my dad used to have to be one of the Lord, one of those old fashioned uh, organs where you had to go to law. My dad used to do that sometimes, not always. Mm -hmm. I can't think of anything else. Oh yeah, three hours ago. Yeah. One from Manchester. Uh, it tastes so long and I decided he didn't like it. <laughs> Went home again. Yeah. That was in the, the next farm. He stayed on quite a long time. He probably went back eventually, but uh, I did it on when I was home guard. I don't know what they did at night with my brother in law, but he wasn't my brother in law then. He used to go on the home guard, he used to see what they did. Never found out. <laughs> we are looking for something in the evening or in the summer, you'd be hair timing. Yeah. You'd later on, you'd be harvesting. So. And that was alright until the grain got laid, then it was a problem because if it was lying flat, you could get under mm -hmm. anything underneath it. Mm. Well, we did. We had a little single or small machine that had a special attachment so it could sew up. Butch off then dip it off and then you got it all to tie by hand. Mm -hmm. Which is quite a job. Yeah. Uh, well, you took a back aching job, but you got used to it. Mm -hmm. The thing was then the straw was all weak and trying to make them stand up together like that. Mm -hmm. It was your if you don't really pop of the harvester, the butt end of the sheep sloped so you could stab it into ground. Mm -hmm. and you, you have a turning around so that they turn inside out to whether it's good well, mm -hmm. you're away with it. 